Oh, here we go. So it's sort of recording. So hello. Um, this is Children of the Revolution. I think it's episode four. And my name is Louise Taylor. And this is... Ashling Conway. Ashling Conway, thank you so much thank you, for Louise. meeting me. So Ashling. So we're going to be talking about a few things. I know we've already had a chat and there's, we're going to probably cover a lot. Um, but I wanted to start with, do you think that we need a revolution? Um, I suppose to me, revolution is a big word. Um, but I feel that we need a, a major shift individually and collectively. So I suppose in a word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, individual and collective shift. And we were talking about, like, can you tell me a bit about what you do? Because I absolutely love what you do, the workshops that you're running and everything. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. So I am a healer life teacher and workshop leader based on the teachings of Louise Hay, yeah. who died last year and was a metaphysical teacher and an inspirational speaker and author of many books but most notably You Can Heal Your Life, um, which Louise found very hard to get published initially many decades ago and has gone on to reach sales of over 40 million copies. Wow. So I read her book You Can Heal Your Life in 2008 um, in a very dark time in my life and really it opened me up to a whole new world, a whole new way of thinking yeah. and living and through applying her theories um, in my own life. Uh, I found such healing and such transformation that really then it was sort of bursting to get out and I really wanted to share it with people and then trained to do this last year and that's yeah. where I am now. So 2008 you got the book and then it changed the way you thought about things yeah. and then you did the training Yeah. and so heal your life, the idea, so it's healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I describe it as heart-centred emotional healing. Heart-centred emotional healing. So it uses our mind but to me it comes from the heart, which makes it softer and maybe different to other approaches. Oh right, so, oh, because she's very, very loving, so the cover mm -hmm. of the book, and what I'll do is I'll put it on the, I'll put the uh, link to the book and a link a bit mm -hmm. to your work and I'll Love put your it. page up Love on it. the Facebook okay. page. But what it is, it's about healing your life, heart-centered approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So her theories are based on the universal law of attraction right. and self-love. I would say her theories are... Um, based on those two elements. Uh -huh. And we were just talking a bit about self-love. Yeah. And how we're not taught. <laughs> we're not actually, it's something that we're, we're told is wrong. It's shunned, yeah, it's to be avoided at all costs. It's wrong. It's yeah. ugly. To love yourself. Yeah, that's what we're taught. That's, and, yeah. and we're told, like, it's good. So we were saying, about, like, it's good to love. Yeah, well, I mean, there's the concept of love, which I'm sure most people would agree is good mm -hmm. is the best thing there is and then there is the concept of ourselves and we're told that those two should never meet that it is morally wrong and to me that's the biggest lay we have been told yeah and we've bought into and believed that lay and that lay has became a truth for us and that is why we are looking for happiness and looking for love in all of the wrong places yeah. and we're looking for it outside ourselves yeah. um, from other people and from things in terms of a new house, a new car or <clears throat> losing weight or a new wardrobe um, and we're hoping to find happiness or acceptance or love in those places and we will never find it if we're looking for it outside ourselves it will always be outside ourselves oh yeah <clears throat> I completely I completely buy into that so do you mind like for me starting to really love myself mm -hmm. it was about acceptance exactly that's it and that's what I say to people because the concept of love people still meet that with resistance when it's applied to ourselves so that's what I would say even if love seems too far off just come back to just making peace with ourselves accepting ourselves yeah. all of the parts of ourselves and all of our faults yes. and feelings just making peace with the being with who we are yeah, yeah. so it's like so I can be a bit hot headed sometimes yeah. Yeah. and being like okay that's all right. That's you. That's part of your uni. It's a bit annoying. <laughs> but yeah, that's like I'm accepting that. Yeah. And actually, when I start to accept it, I can do. I can be exactly. a bit more in control yeah. of it. Otherwise, you're resisting it, and yeah, yeah, you, yeah you're not embracing it. Um, yeah. So, can you tell me a bit about 
the healer life, the, the theories in terms of illness. That's what I'm right. very in, interested in. Yeah, well, um, I suppose I can speak um, very passionately about this personally because whenever I read the book, <clears throat> I read the book for my mental or emotional well being at the time not expecting it to have any impact on my physical health or didn't Mm -hmm. know it had anything to do with physical health but through reading the book I discovered that contained within the book um, there was a section related to physical health and lists most physical ailments, minor ailments like cold sores, flus, two major ailments like cancer, leukaemia, arthritis, really everything is covered there and these theories, Louise Hayes' theories say that every person and every aspect of our lives is a mirror is a reflection of us or some aspect of us yeah. or some belief that we hold yeah so that includes the physical body yeah so really um i found this strange at the start but really um she says that the body is always giving us messages mm-hmm. and not just messages as in there's something wrong in the way that you're thinking or in the way you're living your life but it gives us a very specific message depending on where the ailment arises in our body and what the actual ailment is yeah so anyway at that stage i'd held a long-term chronic condition a stomach condition i'd had it for about eight years mm-hmm. and it, it affected me not just in times when i was stressed or would eat certain foods it affected me every single day so it showed me the underlying emotional or mental pattern that had created this condition mm-hmm. which i didn't understand or connect with straight away but it showed me this And it also showed me an affirmation. So words, two sentences that I could say or think and basically focus on um, to work on the underlying emotional issue that caused the physical issue. So I didn't know if I understood it. I didn't know if I believed it. But what did I have to lose? It was two sentences. I memorized the two sentences and I thought them over and over as often as I could. Mm -hmm. And genuinely in two weeks that condition was gone. It was totally cleared totally cleared wow and it's never returned and I was telling you um earlier on that um another chronic condition that I'd held for maybe five or six winters Raynaud's um a condition to do with circulation in the blood it really caused me a lot of pain uh, for quite a few years and it has been healed as well just this past winter again through applying these theories wow so, so, so basically I have cleared the underlying emotional issue and then the body no longer needs to give me that message. It's an old message. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yes. I and mean, that would be like, that. Would, but that would run through like Reiki, would yeah. be looking mm-hmm. at clearing. Yes, clearing yes, emotion. yes. So, mm-hmm. so if, you, mm-hmm. if you think of emotions like energy and motion, trapped, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both, like, you yeah. think of a trapped trauma, trapped yeah. emotions, it's, things like it's that. It's trapped in the body. So yes. it has to manifest as ill health. Yeah. Yes. Was, so my back used to go and then I would look at that up and it would say you're not speaking your truth or, and then I think about the times that would lead up to what events and what they might be and mm-hmm. what I was actually holding on my back and then it sort of it, it actually is logical at the start it seems strange because we're not taught this yeah um, but this actually teaches us to look inside ourselves and we'll find all of the answers inside ourselves and I have found with myself and with clients that the physical issues and the emotional issues I don't even have to sell this idea to clients because whenever I tell them what their physical issues are telling me about them emotionally, they can't deny. They they, they know this is my baggage, this this is me. Yeah. Wow. They, it's amazing. So you trained in it a year ago. Yeah. And it's exactly. it's like with my counselling training, right, and doing counselling, the theories are all well and good, but then when you start working with the clients, that's yeah. when you start going, Oh what, your mind's blowing. Yeah, every day I'm astounded honestly by the power of this work. The emotional healing that it creates and the the physical healing as well. That's yeah. brilliant. That's brilliant. So what are your so what are you like? What are you hoping that might like for? Because I talked about this before. Like, we are the most medicated country in the world. Our scripts are all free. And why do you think there is such resistance to maybe looking at other and and moving away from traditional? medical practices because I do think that they are failing a lot of people yeah well say for instance the, the Raynaud's like that is a medical condition that was diagnosed and I took the medical treatment in form in the form of tablets and up to 12 tablets a day I took and not only were the tablets not making a 
any better. They weren't even keeping it stable. The condition was actually worsening. So this medical condition that had been diagnosed was not being treated mm-hmm. in a medical way. Um, so the healing came about whenever I discontinued the medical treatment and looked alternatively. Um, so it's hard to say, I suppose we've been conditioned in such a way not to look inside ourselves. Yes. Even at a young age at school, um, please miss, can I go to the toilet? No, you will sit there until the end of the class. Yes. So I know that in society we have to conform. I understand uh-huh. that. But we're even taught to ignore our own body's um, needs. Mm-hmm. You know, even like the very simple things like going to the toilet. Yes. You know, so we're taught not to listen to your body and our intuition. Yeah, and we're taught that in so many ways, like meal yeah. times. Yeah. Like you lo- breakfast, lunch, dinner. That's it. You don't eat when you're hungry. It's it's not time yet. Yeah. Yeah. Eat. And you, and we're taught conditions of worth. Yes. Like yes. You know, you were saying about yeah. when I lose the weight, then I yeah. like myself. And even it, it starts back to no, you can't have a dessert. You haven't eaten your dinner, or um, you know, when you do your homework, you can have this treat, or you you've been bad, so no, you deserve a slap. You don't deserve a yeah. such and such. Yeah. So if we are a certain way, then we may deserve some things. Yes. Yeah. Um. Or but I yeah. love yourself anyway. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> but that's it. it. I think we need to look at the whole body and see... Like, we're not taught that the mind and the emotions and our physical body are connected. You know, we're sort of nearly conditioned that we're robots. We meet everything from our mind. Which is weird. Yeah, and, and our body and our brains and our emotions are not connected. We're nearly taught. No. But it's like mind, body, soul connection. Mm-hmm. I always yeah. think of that. Mm-hmm. The holistically you treat the whole person yeah like I only I did a reflexology course years ago and it blew my mind when yes. I was doing clients like I'd touch a part of their foot and I'd be like this here oh that's a, looking at my wee map that's yeah. the kidneys and they'd be like oh my goodness I got this that yes 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 you know and that mm-hmm. connection so this is actually just bringing us back to ourselves because yeah. really we've gotten so far away from ourselves and again it's because we've been sold the notion that it's wrong to love ourselves Um and we're looking outside of ourselves in terms of material things for happiness oh. and I think anybody who's listening to this or watching this can relate that yes material things and physical things can give us a bit of a lift and make our lives more comfortable yes but everybody I think can identify with having thought right once I move into this house then I'll be happy then I'll have the picture perfect life or once I lose the weight then I'll be happy and everybody can relate to having told themselves things like this but once they meet that condition the ego which is the lowest part of us always is chasing for another condition yes. so there'll always be another condition so if we place conditions on our happiness or on our health or on our well-being there will always be new conditions oh. we must come and accept ourselves as we are right now absolutely so how do you start to love yourself. Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's, a big, that's a big question. Yeah, well, for me, it's taken um, a long time, and, and to me, it's a lifelong journey. You know, I think life's always teaching, and I'm always learning. Now, through using the law of attraction, I'm always learning through my experiences how, how I've attracted these experiences, and then realizing that if I have a shift in my thinking, that I also have a shift in my experiences. But wow. to me, change um, comes about, and self love comes about mm. one thought at a time. Um, so simply by choosing new thoughts about herself and other people and choosing new words and realising the power of our thoughts and the power of our words and yes. actually shaping our reality and I feel that as we change our thoughts and our words to more positive um, that those new thoughts and words trickle down into our subconscious and that they do change slowly our beliefs about ourselves and yes. the world and as we change what we believe well you see I have learned through these theories that whatever we believe about ourselves and about people and about the world, whatever we believe becomes true for us. So that how do we know what our beliefs are? Do we believe in God? Do we not believe in God? We'll probably all be able to access that belief very quickly. But a lot of the beliefs that you were saying are held in our subconscious and we're not aware they're there. Yeah. We just think this is how life is. Therefore, this is why I think the way I do. But actually, we've got it back to front. As I think and speak and believe as I do, this is way, my life is this way. Yes. Yeah. You're creating it in yeah. a way. Yeah. So rather than being victims to life, to life and reacting to life, life is actually, and I know it might sound a bit bonkers, life is actually reacting to us. Yes. Yeah. You see, Louise Hay, that sounds very similar to Carl Jung. Okay. Who, right. I, who is... Um, 
psychoanalysis. I don't know if it's a bit, di- but he would say that everything is a reflection of your mind. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yes, yep. mm-hmm. it's a reflection of you will see what you want to see. Yeah, we don't see people as yes. they are. We see people as we are. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we see people. We, so if you are looking at the worst in yourself, you will yes. see the worst in that others. Is. Yeah, totally. you will not be. So it's like we were saying about like um, beauty. So people who I say, I think everybody's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think I see beauty everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's beautiful. So therefore I can't possibly think I'm ugly. I can't. It's just not, it doesn't. How could you be the one exception? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I would have clients or I see a lot of young people who, who think they're ugly. Yeah. I thought for many years myself, well, I yes. was told that it was, and yes. I believed that. Yes. Yeah. So was I, yeah. Yeah. So you will believe that. But actually, what I'm saying in the schools is, if somebody's calling you ugly, you're not ugly, it's their thoughts that are ugly. It's, yes. You know, because that's, how do they get to decide? Yeah. They don't get to decide. The only person who can decide on my beauty is me. Mm-hmm. But that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a mad concept for people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I know that's the truth. It is, yeah. But how, so in your sessions, yeah. like how, how would you, how would you, like, is it Louise Hay would mm-hmm. say similar things to, like that? Would she, would they be the belief, she's, she's like, it's a reflection of your mind? Yes, yeah, she says that, yeah, that everything in our lives is a reflection of some aspect of us. So that's like, now really I look at experiences in my life or in a client's life and I don't take the experiences at face value. Yes. I kind of think, wait, this is the experience and if I trace it back, uh-huh. And I take away, but if I trace it back, I will uncover the thoughts and the words, but basically the beliefs. Wow. That have, what thoughts and what beliefs must have been there to create this experience? Because we all have our own patterns, our own unique patterns. And I mean, before I read this book, and I, everybody I'm sure can identify with this as well, that um, we all think, why does this sort of thing keep happening to me? Yes. Or why? Do people keep treating me this way? I am so sick of this. Yeah. So everybody has moments like that, yeah. So I was one of those people and I always thought I was a victim. Why do these things keep happening to me? But these theories actually give me the awareness to see that that these experiences actually were mirroring back to me. They were mirroring back to me my beliefs about myself and how other people treated me mirrored how I treated me. Yeah. So once I learned that, so I related the experiences back to me, not from a point of blame, as an oh, I have attracted these situations, yeah. therefore this is my fault. Yeah. These theories give us responsibility for our lives, again, not as in I am responsible for everything that happens to me, as in it is all my fault. Yeah. But I am responsible for everything in my life, as in I have an ability to respond to my life. So if I look at my life in this way, I can trace everything back to me. Oh, and if I make the changes here, because everything in my life is what I'm seeing in the mirror. So if I make the changes here, those changes are reflected back to me in the mirror, in my life. Wow. Wow. It yeah. is wow. So it's actually empowering. Yeah. It actually takes us out of victim mode. And because if we are victims, even though none of us would identify with ourselves yeah. as victims, but before I read this book, I thought I had very little power in my life. Yeah. So therefore I was a victim. Yeah. Um, so if we have no power, we can't bring about any change. Uh-huh. So when we're in power, then we can make yeah. whatever changes we like. Yeah. But it's weird because like whenever I started to be feeling hard, I had to take the leaps of fear. Yes, yes, you yes. Keep, you have to keep leap. You have to, when you start leaping, yeah. you have to keep... Yeah. But it gets easier. It does. Like I lived my whole life trying to stay in my comfort zone as much as I could yeah. and to avoid going outside it. At any time, I would manage to wriggle out of something that was outside my comfort zone. I thought, yes brilliant thank god I've done it that's great yeah. I avoided that great and then on yeah. to the next one but really my comfort zone just became smaller and smaller and smaller and I lived my life more and more from a place of fear yes um, and I've learned just really really in this past year that going outside our comfort zone yeah. is where we really grow and expand and learn and basically yes. where we really live where we become alive alive to the joys of living and and we step out of fear mode yes so as we were saying earlier these theories and I mean Louise Hayes theories isn't the only place we'll find this um, idea but really they showed me that we're either coming from a place of fear or a place of love in everything we think and yeah. say and do so that helps me to check myself and hang on am I coming from a place of fear or am I coming from a place of love right that's fear detached yes. from fear love fear and that makes sense and for me I've had to sometimes 
move away from people who are fearful. Yes. Mm -hmm. It can be contagious. It can, it can. Yeah, we can get sucked in to other people's small-minded thinking or, yeah. Oh, oh, I don't think you should do that. Totally. So, like, um, we were, like, in in the other, one of the other uh, vlogs or with um, Sunshine Project, Michelle, Mm -hmm. she was saying, you know, the naysayers or the the lifters, you know, so if somebody says, I'm going to hand in my resignation because they're unhappy in the job, be around the people who go go on there mm-hmm. that's a great idea you know yes because that's a leap of faith it is and I suppose what I learned through these theories as well is that as we change ourselves the dynamics of each relationship we have also must change Um. so if we are expanding and growing yes. and coming from a place of love so yes. say like what you just described then somebody who's coming from a place of fear meets that change within ourselves with fear and that person wants us to stay in the same small yes. box that we have been in because they're comfortable with that and they know how to deal with that and they know that if we change that it forces them to change and they don't want to change no. so it is as you say them coming from a place of fear yes. so we have to push we have to recognize the fear yeah see it for what it is yeah and when you know yourself like I'm I'm a sensitive person so if somebody says I think that's a really bad idea and I really want to do it it will it will hurt yeah well that's it and I think then we have to really really is it disentangle is that a word it is a word yeah Um, (laughs) um, the voices that are there like is this my own intuition is this my own voice or is this the other person's voice that has pervaded my name or is this the voice of fear or is this the voice of love and we have to really work out what it is we're listening to yes is it our voice or somebody else's or yes yes fear or is it love where are we coming from where are we going to yes and, yeah. and that's it you could, like you know people may try and stop you from doing things um and they and that, and that can be difficult because they can be people that you love deeply mm-hmm. but they could be very uncomfortable with your growth yes. so they're coming from a place of their own limitations and their own blockages yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so how would you say what would you say to people about that you know because that I think is one of the hardest things because we're asking people to heal love themselves mm-hmm. which if they haven't loved themselves for a very very long or yeah. ever yeah. is going to look different yeah mm-hmm. so and that might not be something that a lot of people will accept like how do you do because that's a difficult one I'd say and how do you what do you ask yeah, you like, how do you deal with the, the, the with people that, yeah. around you not being accepting yeah. of the yeah. the new you or the yeah new. well I suppose I'm not saying it's easy I mean I um, really for my whole life I feel that I was going against my nature in what I did um, mm-hmm. and I really changed and lost so much of myself um, to become more acceptable or more accepted um, so really now it's taken me years to work through the fear and the guilt that had bound me for years but now I am going with my nature so it was like before I changed myself to fit into the world I found myself in and now I have changed the world that I am in now you know to suit me oh wow um, but basically I don't know there are different w- ways that work for different people but I think it's nice to visualise myself in a bubble and realise that I am the most important person in my life and it took me a long time to come around to this that no other person or place or thing has any power in here unless I give that power to that person so thinking hang on my thoughts it's my mind it's my thoughts I choose what I allow to come in here and what doesn't so for years I used to wrongly think oh um, I started off today in a positive mode and somebody said something to me and they hijacked my mood yes. and I was seething with resentment for how dare they, you know, spoil my mood. Mm-hmm. Um, but really it took me years to realise then that no, 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 I that was my choice to give my power away to that person or to that yes. experience. That I can choose to negatively, I can choose to plug into that experience and react emotionally to it or I can choose to stay in my own bubble and think my own positive thoughts and, because I now know that what I fill my mind with is what I fill my life with. Yes. So I now... I'm very selective about what I allow in here. Yeah. But do you still feel? Of course, of course. You, know, you of course. still feel pain, you still feel of course, hurt. Of course. But I suppose for me it's more I process them quicker and I recover I heal probably yes, quicker. Yes, because you're learning more. Now I'm learning from experience yeah. in life much more quickly. Yes. Yes. Because mm-hmm. I don't think you can avoid 
negative experience or like painful experience, negative you know painful experiences in life it's so unavoidable yes and I suppose I want to watch what I say now because I know that everything I say and everything I think is an affirmation and that affirmations are actually you know creating our reality our thoughts yeah. and our words are but I do feel um, I now look at every situation in my life even the negative situations yeah. in a positive way because say for instance the breakdown that I had in 2008 yes that was a breakdown and that was one of the most difficult times in my life but ultimately that breakdown served as a breakthrough yes so that was one of the worst times in my life yeah but I am so grateful and I'm not yes. saying that because I'm this impossibly an impossibly positive person happy happy just pretend everything's no. perfect because I can't do that I'm very real and I yeah. am quite analytical and I can't just brush things under the carpet yeah so I'm not just positive for the sake of being positive but really um I needed at that time in my life I needed things to get a bit worse and a bit worse and then when I thought they couldn't get any worse they got worse yeah and I needed that to happen really for me to look at my life in a different way and think hang on what I am doing is really not working and I cannot pretend anymore that it's yeah. working so I have to do something different so that negative experience propelled me into the positive by creating a whole new awareness yes. and a whole new way of thinking yes, I feel that you have to have an, you have to do enough of what doesn't work for you sometimes mm -hmm. and come to your own rock bottom to realise no this is not right absolutely I'm, I'm just that no I love that in just 26 minutes I just keep it around 30 minutes but this is brilliant because what I right so in terms of like um mental health emotional health so I love thinking about the breakdowns as the breakthroughs because yes. that's exactly what I think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but unfortunately more and more people when there's hardship stuff yes. are running to the doctors to yes. get medicated and shutting down mm -hmm. their emotions yeah um, then they're getting labels, they're getting diagnosis, they're getting told they're, you know, I just think there's a problem mm -hmm. with sometimes these complete, this whole, this whole, these dark, dark times, I encourage people to walk through them. Yes, totally. But, yes. And then, uh, because I always have the belief the best is yet to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a brilliant belief. I don't know, even mm -hmm. if it's completely mm -hmm. wrong, it makes me feel good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I buy mm -hmm. into that belief. Yeah. And also, you know, the darkest moments for mm -hmm. me have led to the greatest yeah. time of my life. Me too, totally. So if we choose to look at life in a different way and that we learn from what life has given us, yes. You know, we can always learn and grow no matter how tough things are for sure I've been in very dark places in my life but really those dark places have been a source of great learning for me oh. I now draw on those and I now draw on those to help other people as well yes yeah. wounded so, healer so like um, there's a, a saying of Louise Hayes yeah honour the entirety of your journey don't wish any of it away use it for the betterment of yourself and others I love it so these theories don't deny the negative or shun the negative or you know try to avoid the negative they take the negativity we they give us a new awareness of the negativity in our lives mm -hmm. and um, help us to go forward and create something different for our future I love that so there's another thing I want to I think I've spoken to you about this this comes up because you talk about or and Louise Hay and the theories and all about the ailments and the communication that they're giving you the messages mm -hmm. that the illnesses are giving you um, um, fibromyalgia in this country. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about this before? Well, it's an autoimmune, yeah, a condition, isn't it? Yeah. The rates are rising in that diagnosis, and I think it's trauma trapped in the body. Right. And I'm not sure because funny, it's not in Louise Hayes' book because I suppose Louise Hayes' book was written quite a few years ago. Yeah. And really, autoimmune conditions are in the rise are in recent years. Yes. So I'd need to look into that a wee bit more. I'd need to find out more about fibromyalgia, but. I know that when a person is sitting in front of me in a one-to-one -one session, when they tell me all of their conditions and how it affects their body, really, to me, it's like lots and lots of dots and then I'm piecing them together. Yes. So I'd need to learn more about that condition. Yeah. But each person's conditions are specific to them as well. Though Somebody may have fibromyalgia and they may have arthritis and they may have psoriasis on their scalp and they may have... Um, pain in their left knee so yeah. I will put all of the conditions together to, yeah. see, to see what the, that person's unique patterns are that's brilliant though. so is fibromyalgia is it inflammation is it is uh, muscular from the brain yeah, and nerves and they often feel the entire skin feels like a lot of it like they're being stabbed a lot there's an incredible pain intensity all around the body and it's just something that comes up quite a lot 
it's right. coming up more and more I think yes I haven't no men with it, but a lot of women. Ah, right. Experience. Well, I would need to look at it more. But is it as well to do with? Is it? It's not to do with the brain and the nerves and the muscles and things like that as well. No, it's not. I think the. I think it's the body's completely overwhelmed. Just shut with down. Yeah. With stored. Yeah. Well, I mean, Louise Hay's theories show that where there's pain, um, there is guilt, and it's always true. The person may or may not realise that there's guilt or that they're harbouring guilt, but when there's pain. It conveys a need for punishment, and if there's a need for punishment, then there's something that we've done wrong, something we're holding on to guilt wow. for. So we're not forgiving ourselves somewhere for something that happened in our lives as well. And um, but I would need to look into that condition a wee yeah. bit more. No, well, that affects the body. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find it all fascinating. But um, so in terms of what you're hoping to do, so what are your plans for the next will wee while? Have you any workshops? Or? Yeah, I have lots of workshops always on my page. I hate in your life with Ashley on my Facebook page. Um, so I create new workshops um, on different themes, mm-hmm. um, self-love, forgiveness, mm-hmm. um, life after loss. I have lots of different themes um, on physical and emotional well-being as well. And I work um, on a one-to-one basis as well. But really my mission is just to help where help is needed mm-hmm. and just to shine light on anybody who is struggling in the dark and to show them that there is another way because that's what these theories did for me. They illuminated my whole life really shone a light when it was really really dark and it really continues to do so so I just want to help anybody with any issues really oh that's brilliant that's and lovely I, I have found that if somebody comes to me with an open mind mm-hmm. and a real desire to change that this work is life changing for them that is all that is required it doesn't matter what their what they've been through and what their issues are an open mind yeah and a real desire to change. Yeah, those two things are necessary. Yeah, that's what. That's for it. my part, yeah. that's exactly right. An open mind and a real desire yeah, to change. That's it. Yeah, I think that's that's brilliant. Yeah. So how was that for you? Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Thank comfortable, you so much. comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.